Shellick are about to dip their toes into the transfer market because guess what? Xavier Mbuyamba for Barcelona could be on his way to Celtic. They have entered the race. Chelsea are in pole position. And we also have Owen Coyle leaving Queen's Parks. Thoughts on Owen Coyle before we dive into the monster at six foot five. Oh, not not oh the new monster, but uh, oh in, t- in words of Gary Neville, Owen Coyle. I f- I, it's, it's a strange one because I mean he was doing so good, but you feel like just due to the fact that Queens Park did fall apart and let slip promotion to top flight, something that they might never actually be an opportunity they might never get again and a position they might never be in again. I can almost see why. He has resigned. Don't get me wrong, I think if Owen Coyle finished fourth at the start of the season, uh, at the start of the season, if you said finish fourth, I think people would be like, oh, that's a good that's a good spot for uh, Queen's Park. That's a good position, considering there is quite a, a lot of decent teams in this league. However, it's the fact that they were ahead and playing really good stuff for a while, and they just looked like it was their league to throw away. And then they did throw it away. Like, we can sit here and we can turn around and say, well, Dundee put together a massive run to catch, but in reality, they didn't. No, Dun- Dundee, but- Dundee's form was not title winning form. Dundee's form towards the end of the table was like maybe upper mid-table at best. I mean, uh, Dundee's form, they were drawing so many games and literally Queen's Park fell over the line to get fourth spot in the league. Had there been a couple more games left, Queen's Park would have probably finished seventh. Yeah, which is mad to think. Oh, sick. Sick, because Rafe Rovers uh, couldn't catch Morton and Inverness would have, would have overtook Queen's Park based on current form. They played 36, if there was like 38 games, they would have been caught. So, I mean, I can see why he's resigned, because like they literally have... I mean, the, the, their form was... I was going to say their form was up there with Hamilton and shit, but it, it was down there with Hamilton and Cove Rangers. Aye, no, definitely not up. But I can see why he's resigned, but let's talk with someone that's going to sign. But to say about Arsenal, like... Two ball jobs. Similar kind of situation. Although the only difference is Arsenal have needed to be great because Man City have put year. together a really good run. Queen's Park didn't need to be great. They Doesn't just need, they just needed to be solid. Yeah. Well, like, when you're chasing a title and you've you've got two goals scored in six games. That's no good. Going into the last match. I mean that is that is fucking horrendous. And then you score about ten goals in that game and still get beat. Not ideal for and them. And then humped in the playoffs as well. But, I mean, I think nobody... Did anybody really think Queen's Park were going to beat Partick? No. I didn't. No. I mean, Partick had been Although, one. I didn't think they'd get pumped for that at home. But they did. No, me neither. But, I mean, the writing was on the wall. The writing's on the wall. But the next Van Dyke could potentially be on his way to Celtic. Big Xavier Mbayamba could be on his way. It is a decade after Van Dijk uh, joined Celtic, of course. They've joined Watford, Ajax and Chelsea in the hunt for this guy who currently plays for Barca. But Barca gave the green light for this guy's uh, sale. Well, you know what? Celtic's second team can win the league, apparently, so I don't think they need this guy. Might not. Yeah, I look at Kobayashi and uh, the rest of the defenders, man, and I think... Phew. Who else have they got at centre-back? Welsh. Welsh and Kobayashi. See, a lot, a lot of Celtic fans, I mean, this is, I mean, let's just take everyone else's specs out of the equation. Is that, See, is that, the green that... tint at specs threw Kobayashi under the bus. Yeah, because I don't think, we, we haven't re- I've not seen enough of Kobayashi to say if he's good or bad, right? But, like, I mean, he, he, they're basically putting all the blame on him for that old firm defeat. I think Starfelt's been good this season, but he made a colossal mistake. Yeah, well, I thought he was actually all right against Rangers. No, he, he was, was but he but he made a colossal mistake with McGregor. No, I think was no, I I thought it was more worrying f- from a Celtic perspective just how crap McGregor, Tati, and O'Reilly were in the midfield. They offered absolutely nothing. Yeah, were they, they on the they, beach? They they will throw the likes of Kobe Ashi, Ralston, and Burnaby under the bus. I feel like they just want to throw the fringe players rather than blame the. You know, the starting midfielders or whatever, the key players. But look, this guy here, I mean, he plays for Barca, so he can't be that bad. No, he's dubbed the next Van Dyke, so again, he can't be that bad. But what, talking about the next old firm, I think the first old firm of the next season is going to tell a lot. Could this guy be a part of that? I mean, he could be, but there's a lot of fees being mentioned, but he's 21, he's six foot five. he's through the Barca Academy. The fact Chelsea are involved probably means that Celtic are going to be outpriced because Chelsea could literally just bid 70 billion for this guy and it wouldn't change anything. 
And knowing Chelsea with their transfer record, I wouldn't even surprise you if they did that. I think they would. But in terms of his transfer value, it is around eight and a half million euros. Which, I mean, I, I don't see why Celtic couldn't get that done. I think that's a big risk. I think it's different. Celtic paying that money for Yota and Carter Fickers wouldn't have had them at the club for a season. And they know exactly what they're getting. It, it does seem a lot more of a risk for me when Celtic are signing a player who's young and we don't know what we're getting. Or they don't know what they're getting. No, no, you're right. we. Who the hell's we? We ain't Celtic fan news. Maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe Celtic could get the guy on loan. With a, yeah, well, that's the rumours for you, right? A maybe, maybe he goes for cheaper, but what, what, the, what, daily, about a loan to what the daily record yeah. was saying was 8.5 million euros, which is like, what, 7 million, 6.5 million quid. Uh, but that is it, guys. This guy could be on his way. I had to rate this transfer happening out of 10. I'm going to give it a 2. I think their name's just in there because he's been dubbed the next Van Dyke, and of course Van Dyke. Went to Celtic. Yeah, so. I mean, see when you see when you see those kind of clubs in the running for a player that you want, it's, you've got to be honest, it's un, it's unlikely that you get him. Yeah, absolutely. There's one thing, Rangers, remember Rangers were battling for Fearman, and it was was it there against PSV? I mean, you feel like maybe that's a winnable, even though Rangers ended up losing that one. Maybe Fearman just wanted to It's all about money. Whatever. Yeah, but I feel like Rangers, PSV are like kind of similar. No, yeah. I feel like that's a winnable transfer battle. But when you're if you're Rangers and you want the same player as Chelsea, then you know you're going to be struggling. See when Rabinho signed for City and he thought he was signing for United. Nah, yeah, you need some sort of luck like that. I mean, you need something like that. You need you need someone to look at the Rangers badge and see like blue and red and white and like oh Chelsea, Chelsea's coming in for us. Then, then they look at the fucking page yet and like this is no Chelsea. This is no Chelsea. This is pre Roman Abramovich Chelsea. And until next time, what are you rating it? I'm giving it a one or a two. It was a two. a two. I don't care a fuck. I hope he doesn't go. Do you don't know? Go, don't sell your soul to the devil. For whom the bell tolls.